Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. This year is finally coming to an end and I thought this was a good opportunity to look back on my photos from 2021. I will be sharing my personal highlights with you and you can always drop me yours down in the comments. I got my ice matcha, I got my questionable mic situation here and I got my notes and my bird is screaming in the background so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with January. In January, my friend Lina paid me a visit and we took some photos together, as you might have guessed. And I spontaneously came up with a concept and I had this uh, cardboard and I wanted to do like a cutout where you would see her through. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at explaining my concepts and photos, so maybe it just maybe I should just shut up and let you take a look at the photos. Um, so yeah, I chose a bird as the shape for the cutout, and I really liked the outcome, um, especially because we just played around with everything. And I'm really grateful for friends like Lina, whom I can um, like experiment with and she's very patient and um, it's always a lot of fun with her. So shout out to Lina, thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I took these on my Mamiya 645 on, I guess it was Forma Pan um, 400 and of course Fuji M6. Um, another photo I took in January was um, this one. A friend of mine lent me her um, Diana camera and I've never worked with a Diana before. I remember back when I was a teenager I always wanted a Diana and I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it but I think this photo came out pretty cool because I um, took the camera with me on a walk back home um, with my sister and our dog and um, I used Formopan 100 uh, here and I really like this um, gloomy, mysterious, <laughs> um, dark atmosphere it created so yeah this is a favorite of mine from January as well. Let's head into February. So, again my sister and our dog, Ruby, and I had this concept in mind um, with this um, field of dried grass, um, which was like um, laying on the ground because of the rain. And um, my mom actually took a um, photo with her phone there when she was on a walk with Ruby. and. She took a photo of Ruby in this grass and I really liked the colors and the textures and so that inspired me to do um, this little photo shoot. The concept I had in mind was um, the second picture you see on the, on the right um, with the um, line of trees in the background and my sister Julia and Ruby centered in the middle. Centered in the middle, yeah. <laughs> um, I took these on um, my Weltaflex, which is a really bad viewfinder. It's really dark and you can't see properly, but I managed to get uh, them in focus. I had the Fuji Pro 400H loaded into the camera and I actually have some behind the scenes clips because I actually planned to um, yeah, make a behind the scenes video of this little shoot. And I never shared it, so um, there you go. Here's I will insert some uh, clips from the day.
yeah I don't know if you're interested in like how I come up with my concepts but I guess it's pretty boring because uh, sometimes images just just um, pop up in my head and like I said the inspiration was a um, photo my mom took with her phone on a walk and um, then I just um, went from there and like composed it with the colors and um, yeah <laughs> In February, I also had a shoot with my friend and musician, Saru. She's an artist, she's a musician, and um, her project is called Sarah T. Musician, so please check her out. Um, she also made a music video um, in summer, uh, where you can actually see a clip of me. Um, I will link it down below. She needed some uh, new photos for her upcoming album for uh, promotion and stuff, and um, she came up with the concept, or she and another friend of ours, and um, we shot at this, um, it's not really abandoned building, because there was some um, uh, social uh, group project um, were situated there, and um, this, but this house, this building, um, was about to be torn down. So they could actually paint on the walls, and this is what you see in the background. Um, they painted the walls in like a uh, abstract, colorful uh, theme. <laughs> we place her in the middle on this rock and um, with her guitar and as she's called Sarah T Musician, we also included this little teapot um, and I think it came out really nice and I'm really proud of this photo as well. And I took this one I guess I took it with my Welterflex as well, because it's square and this is my only square camera. And then it's probably also um, Fuji Pro 400H. I also took this one. Um, this was more of an outtake and I like wanted to try something because uh, Saru brought this um, really pretty mirror. I guess she said it's from her aunt. And yeah, then this photo um, came to life. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, let's move on to March, uh, which is my favorite month because my birthday is in March. <laughs> um, the shoot I did with my sister because she's my favorite mother. We always do. Um, spontaneous kind of shoots at home. And this time I was inspired by this um, old screen print we did back in 2012 when I was uh, studying in Mainz for communications design and we had this little screen printing workshop. I decided to keep it because I really liked it and it's quite big and um, I'm waiting until I have a bigger apartment where I can put it in a big black frame and I think it will look awesome but yeah, this time I used it as a background for some portraits I took of my sister. As I said, I'm pretty bad at explaining my concepts and oftentimes there's not much concept which goes into my photos and I just kind of play around and do things intuitively. Um, yeah. Something else I shot in March which I really like are these photos. My other sister gave me some lilies for my birthday and I wanted to incorporate them in a photo so I chose to do some still lives with them and um, I added some matcha in a cup and um, the bamboo whisk and the bamboo spoon and some books and I really like it and I really like it uh, because it's black and white um, even though I used matcha and it was this vibrant green color um, but I really like this laid back um, calm atmosphere the black and white film created um, I used probably also formal pan because I've shot a lot of formal pan 400 and 100 in the beginning of the year in April as we all know at least in the northern hemisphere um, plants, bushes, trees are coming back to life and are blossoming and I like to cut some um, 
bloomy branches and take them home with me um, to create some photos. Um, that's what I did here as well. I took these pink blossoms from a little bush that was growing just outside my house and I baked these matcha cookies which are one of my favorite cookies and I just you know I went with it it's like Japanese cherry blossom season inspired <laughs> I really like the outcome um, and the contrast between the green and the, the pink I also took some magnolias home with me but I just can't resist magnolias because they're so pretty and they smell so good and um, I photographed them on the same day on the same background and I added some um, plastic pieces to the photo on the right side um, and I found them while um, doing a little trash pickup with my friend Danny I like the contrast between the plastic um, which is like solid and hard and I don't know stands for being there eternally and, and then the magnolia blossoms which are like more fragile and soft and will soon fade away and I also like the contrast between um, blooming plants and the plastic if that makes sense uh, so yeah and uh, the last photo I got for April is this one. My little Yuki joined me for the photo, although you can see it's she's kind of blurry because she soon fl flew away and it was already kind of dark, so I had the shutter speed was kind of slow. Maybe you have seen it on Instagram, but uh, sadly she passed away uh, this autumn, so I do cherish this photo even more. And yeah, let me know what you think. Um, and let's move on to May. In May I had a photo shoot and that was really productive because we got a ton of photos. I was shooting with uh, Josefina and her friend Alex um, helped us with the styling and we could borrow some clothing from the little winter shop I was working at. So we went a bit wild. I would just uh, look you through the photos. So the title of the series is um, Join the Vintage Revolution. This was more of a like fashion kind of shoot, which I'd love to do more often. As I said, this day was really nice and so productive and we had a lot of fun. It was the first bigger shoot for me um, during the pandemic or since the pandemic. So it was really freeing as well at some point. In May I took photos with my sister Julia as well. So this time we took uh, Rügene healing chalk from the island of in the north of Germany. Um, we took that and painted her eyes and we really liked the look of it um, because we tried with um, white eyeliner first but it didn't look too good so we did this and um, I think the photos came out really stunning. And as you can see, I have no photo for June because apparently I was too busy with work and 
that was also the time when I was kind of burned out from my job. I was working um, from, for um, the local bakery as a photographer and graphic designer. And I soon quit um, the job because it was draining me that much that I didn't um, shoot anything personal or anything else but work. Um, although I'm really grateful for the job and the time and I learned a lot of things, I'm glad that I quit because um, my inspiration immediately came back. Yeah, that's the most important thing because I consider myself an artist and not only a photographer who does um, services, but most importantly for me is that I'm an artist and if I don't feel comfortable and if I feel drained and not inspired, I get stressed and I get easily depressed and burned out and yeah so a little tip from me to you um, just listen to your to your gut to your inner feeling and if something doesn't feel right anymore um, maybe you should change it then let's proceed to July um, in July I was doing my first collaboration with one of my favorite brands which is Sunday Natural. I've been a customer of theirs for years and um, when they approached me in early summer to do a collaboration I was over the moon. Yeah, So I came up with what you saw in my last video if you have seen it. If not um, I will link it down below or somewhere here. <laughs> it was matcha waffles. I made them with my sister and um, yeah, I took some photos. I was really happy with the result. And I also love especially the dreamy look of the photo on the right. Uh, speaking of matcha, I also took this photo. This is a mini series I, I shot when I replaced my chasen with a new one and um, yeah, I wanted to include it here because this year I feel like uh, my matcha addiction really took over. <laughs> Moving on to August, let's continue with Sunday Natural because I also had their vegan um, supplement. And I had this concept in mind where I would present um, the little bottle and but also take out some of the pills. Apparently um, I underexposed the film so it came out kind of dark but I really like the outcome somehow because I think it matches with the green label on the bottle and it's also very moody and I don't know it's just really my style. <laughs> I had another collaboration in July which was with Kale and me and I also have an upcoming collaboration with them so stay tuned for that video. Um, I did a one day juice cleanse in July slash August and I took more photos of that but um, maybe, if you, maybe you've seen it on Instagram um, in summer but a lab a local lab which I wanted to support because you know support your local shops uh, messed up I think two or three of my films and they weren't usable anymore so um, I took this photo of the empty bottles and I really like it um, because most people or most influencers <laughs> that are working with Kayla Me um, show the full bottles and um, yeah, I wanted to do something different. Also, the aspect that they are taking back um, the packaging, the bottles, um, and they are recycling it. That um, that thought went into this photo. This one <laughs> is a photo that is also really dear to me because it's our cat Mila and my sister Julia holding her and she's sleeping in Julia's arms and it's just so adorable and I had to include it here. I 
had quite a few um, collaborations in August and September, which I'm really grateful for. And it was a lot of fun shooting them. And looking back, back at it now, I realize how much I shot in August and September. Um, so yeah, let's move on with another collaboration I did. It was for um, Shocha store and they sent me their Sencha and of course I took the photos with my sister Julia. <laughs> We shot these photos um, outside in our garden and this one is my favorite because this soft breeze of wind is going through her hair and she's looking um, to the side and to the distance and she's holding her little cup of tea and it just feels so serene and calm to me and also the contrast between the green tea and her red orange dress um, really speaks to me. Um, yeah, Let me know what you think down in the comments. And um, Shocha store also sent me their matcha and we took these photos inside. Really like the colors, how they came out and for the matcha I wanted to um, document the process of making matcha, of um, putting it into the sieve above the cup and sifting the matcha through the sieve and then pouring hot water and whisking it up and these three are my faves from the series. Still in August um, I have another photo and I came up with this concept spontaneously when I was um, I think I was on a walk back home from the doctor and I passed by this um, sunflower field in the distance and immediately I knew I wanted to take some photos there with a person standing on a ladder um, amidst the field and yeah then I asked my friend Danny um, who also happens, happens to be my neighbor and she was up for it and we took photos there and this one is my favorite I'm really glad that I took it took the photos in black and white. Um, I don't know, it feels more calm and yet some kind of powerful in my opinion. And um, yeah, this is my favorite photo of her from that day. I also went um, to on vacation with my boyfriend. We went to St. Peter Ording uh, in the north of Germany by the North Sea. This is a self-portrait with which he helped me and um, I'm standing amidst this um, field of sea lavender. It just represents the feelings I have when I'm at the seaside and this also just feels very calm to me and very close to nature, all these kind of things. That's it for August, so let's move into September, which is much more. <laughs> let's start with Mamma Mia, because um, this is my, I think this is my first cover, and Mamma Mia is um, a local magazine for families. It's free and um, you can get it in Würzburg. I was approached to do the cover, and I was gladly doing so and it was completely my responsibility to come up with um, a concept um, I knew that the, that the overall theme for, the, for this issue would be um, sustainability so I got inspired by um, like Fridays for Future um, like banners as it's a magazine for families um, we knew we wanted to work with children it was a lot of fun, it was a lot of fun. The cover photo is actually shot uh, digitally because they needed it ASAP. And, um, I will, but I also took some film photos, which I will show you now. So these are more like outtakes, but I definitely really like them too. I also had two photo shoots in Hamburg uh, when I visited my friend, my best friend <laughs> Luisa in Hamburg in September. The first shoot I had with Iba, whom I found on Instagram, and I liked his look very much. And so I wrote him a message if he was up for some photos, and 
he, luckily he agreed and this shoot was also a lot of fun. I really like Eva and um, yeah, I think we had a good time. We went um, to ha Hamburg's Speicherstadt and we're also nearby the river Elbe. I also include some um, like film strips, which is scan because I really like them. Big thank you to Iba for this amazing day. Um, I will link his Instagram down below, so check him out and give him a follow. And the second shoot I had in Hamburg was with my old friend Pony. And I think I first met her in, I don't know, 2015, 2014? I can't really remember. And I guess we haven't seen each other in five years. So it was really nice to see her again. And um, we took a walk around um, Planten and Blommen in Hamburg. It's um, the Botanical Garden and Park. And um, yeah, we took some photos there, <laughs> as you might have guessed. Pony is a professional actress and model and dancer and she really knows how to um, work with her body and facial expressions and yeah, I really love working with her. Um, I will also link her Instagram down below, so please check her out and give her a follow. And on our walk we were passing by this beautiful tree which was just standing, um, almost hanging above uh, the lake. And I was asking her to stand on um, the trunk or the branch or whatever it was and I just think this photo, I'm so proud of this photo because she looks so powerful and I love the combination of women and nature and yeah I just think this photo looks so powerful and I really really love it and this one is definitely my favorite but also this one because she looks so tiny here and um, these big leaves were not far away from the tree and it was starting to rain and she quickly hopped under these big leaves for me and I could take a photo and even though it's not really 100% in focus I love this photo so much. So also a big thank you to Pony for this um, beautiful few hours we had. And yeah, I can't wait to go back to Hamburg and create with you. Still in September, um, I had another collaboration with Sunny Natural. And this time they sent me their Murzalski Mountain Tea, which is super delicious. And I took these photos. With still life photos, I don't come up with concepts as much beforehand. I like to work with what I have and what inspires me in the moment and just put everything together and play around with it until I feel it's right. And they also sent me their Ilang Ilang uh, essential oil. I feel like this recap is gonna be so long um, because we're still in September. I also had the opportunity to work for the Youth Education Center and they wanted me to make um, some posters, but more digital posters for their upcoming um, three-day conference slash workshop, which was revolving around um, democracy and um, discrimination. And I came up with the idea to take some photos for that and the concept was um, an invitation to join. Luckily some of the people who work there helped and modeled for me and um, really liked the outcome of this photo and I also took some more um, of them sitting on a table 
discussing things and um, yeah, so I'm including them here as well. One last photo for September is this one of my friend Louis. Because he came to visit um, in September as well, even if it was just for a few hours. It was really nice uh, seeing him again, I guess we didn't see each other for many months. And I snapped this photo of him and I really like it. Moving on to October, um, I had three photo shoots. I met up with Barish, who asked me to take some portraits of him. We met at the uh, Lüvenbrücke, Lions Bridge, in Würzburg, and um, I loved this bridge because of the big lion statues, and I knew I wanted to uh, incorporate them somehow. I really like how these turn out, and I feel like I say this a lot. Yeah, afterwards we went um, for a stroll, like in one direction, and ended up at this small park with a little lake. And I just um, thought it would be nice if he was standing on the other side of the lake, underneath this um, willow tree. I love how poetic it looks and he's an author and poet slash writer. Yeah, I think that this really fits quite well. I also had a photo shoot with Lena and I know Lena from uni um, and I was asking her if she was up for some photos and luckily she agreed. And we could also borrow some clothing from Vintage Rakete from the vintage shop I was working at and um, we just went outside the shop and to the like one of the main streets in the city and we have this um, open bookshelf there where you can um, take out books and leave books there all for free just to share books with everyone and um, yeah i just placed her there and played around with this bookshelf and i really like the outcome And I also took some more photos of her, which I haven't gotten around to edit yet. Um, so those will definitely <laughs> come. Yeah, and then I um, met up with Pia, who I know from uh, uni as well. And she started her pottery journey in the first lockdown. And she's gotten so good at it. And I wanted to document her process and how she's working with clay and on the wheel and everything. And um, yeah, then I paid her a visit. After taking photos, she showed me how to work with the throwing wheel as well. And I made this tiny little cup, maybe you saw it um, in one of my photos. If not, I will show you just in a second. And yeah, this this was a lot of fun as well. And I really love. I should stop saying really that often. Um, and I, I love working with other artists in other fields of art. And it's just so inspiring to me. Then my favorite photo of October, and I guess probably also of the whole year, is this one. It's me and my little Yuki. This photo means so much to me because, as I said, she passed away unexpectedly. And, um, yeah. I just love that photo so much. Moving on to November. And this will be the last month because I have taken photos in December, but not as many. And they're still not back from being developed. So these will be the final photos you'll see. 
in November I visited Louisa again, this time with my friend Lina, or with our friend Lina, and I took this photo in a cafe. Where Lina and I were working. And um, this cafe was really nice. <laughs> and yeah, I also took this photo there when we went on a flea market. And now I'm ending the year with two photos of my favorite thing this year, which was obviously matcha. And on the left you see the little cup I made uh, together with Pia. These were the photos I took this year and um, I'm really amazed at how much I did and how many photos I took and sometimes I beat myself up if I'm not shooting anything productive in weeks but I think I should be more gentle with myself because it's Still, we still we're still in the middle of a pandemic and everyone's struggling and I also focus more on still life photography this year I guess still life and food and I it, it was the first year where my um, freelance business was blossoming <laughs> a little more and I should look back and be proud of all the things I did and um, yeah Here's to taking even more photos next year and I'm really looking forward to all the projects and people I'm gonna work with. So yeah, to wrap this up, my highlights definitely were um, the collabs I, I could do, um, the new people I've met, all the shoots I could do, um, everything new that I learned and I'm also grateful for the mistakes I made. Um, because they, they are learning opportunities and I'm really happy about the um, cover shoot for the family magazine and all the jobs I could do um, as well a lot of them I didn't show because they're not as interesting and they're like more jobs and more digital photography and um, here on this channel I would like to focus more on the on my artistic side of photography um, but I'm not quite sure about that yet because my channel is quite a mix of things and um, yeah so thank you for watching let me know what was your favorite photo of mine this year and um, yeah also leave me things what did you learn this year what was your what were your highlights and yeah I'm also gonna do a Q&A very soon so if you have any questions photography related or just related to me or anything um, you can also leave them in the comments below or message me on Instagram and if you don't already do please follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel and yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one bye bye